Um, it's a bit like the, the principle of um, the open dialogue, which is you know lis listening really, uh, concentrating on the other person, listening and um, reacting, rather than trying to plan a thing to be to be interesting or to be funny or clever or anything else. Is to be to be interest to be interested, um, as somebody said yesterday in our group rather than trying to be interesting. I think that's my answer to that. Oh, great. Bless the heart of the painting there, with, with smoke, smoke ascending like a prayer. Bless the folk who dwell within, keep them pure and free from sin. So that's one of the principles, the polyphony of voices. We want to hear your lovely voices in this session. Even you at the back who are talking to each other. <laughs> It's make it for us. <laughs> so we are, as well as being heard, it's very important that you listen to each other. Um, oh, here they come. Now everyone's on the front foot. Um, so there are two principles there: be listen and be heard. And that we, everyone receives a response. Um, there's nothing worse than not having a response. He's not answering his door. Yes, to me, though. Well, have you not? Yes. Why are you saying that hmm. to me? Yeah. Why did you first call me ten minutes ago? Have you not? He might decide not to bring you in. Yeah, the yeah, family yeah. and. Yeah. Um, uh, Actually, uh, it comes back to what I was saying before about the stress of uh, being in the orbit of someone who's really ill sometimes can be that they, it's, a very, it's actually a very powerful position, or can be. You seem very quiet. It's not creme brulee. Not in a million years. It's creme caramel. Oh, you don't like creme caramel. I, the way that we, um, little details become, in the family scene, become so important and then cause a row. Mm. Or cause a, you know, that's a, that is actually quite a, I think quite a common experience of people mm. when people are ill, you know, that kind of stress of caring and looking yeah. after somebody. Yeah. I want the burnt sugar on the top. Creme caramel, not creme brulee. I want the burnt sugar on the top. Mm. Burnt sugar on the top. That's not burnt sugar, that's caramel. Mm. I'm very disappointed. You're dealing with long-term consequences often of abuse, uh, physical sexual abuse, people who neglect themselves or harm themselves. and uh, That sort of image is very, very hard to, to get across. Can I have it anyway? Yeah, it's for you. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. Shall we share? No, it's all for you. It's all for you. You're going to watch me eat it? Oh, yeah. It's lopsided. Do I get a spoon? You should, yes. Go and get a spoon. Go and get a spoon. Get yourself a spoon. Even with Yako Secular and the Finnish Open Dialogue crowd, they, they don't say we hate drugs, we don't want anything to do with no. bad pharma, you know, it's not that. And we don't want to take such an obvious stance in this show. No. Um, and we, neither do we want to portray a sort of cliched idea of a mental illness. But one of the things that I liked about uh, Richard's delusions in inverted commas is that he didn't seem to have a problem with them, yeah. you know, so it's very much the psychiatrist pathologizes his yeah. experience yeah. rather than it being as a result of any distress that he seems to be feeling as a result yeah. of his beliefs. Yeah. And that's very common, that's yeah. what happens to people. Yeah. Yeah. I know you've got a look in your eye. I know that look. If I find that has gone when I come back... How can I eat it without a spoon? Woe betide! Mm. Put that tongue away. Mm.
Put the tongue away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. sort of like it's uh, you, you, you just you're up to here with stress and worry. There's, this, there's a theory. So there's in the, of thinking. Yeah, there's yeah. a theory in psychiatry called high expressed emotion, which is this idea that if you're caring for somebody who's ill, uh, you get very agitated, and that's the that's the worst thing that you can do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I always think, what's on the other side? It's yeah, going to yeah. be far better than what I've got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Not that, that it wasn't good, it was, but just kind of, there was that, whatever's happening over there is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dad, he didn't want to see you. Your education. It's um, a sort of idea of a private self and a public self. Okay. And that, that the Richard character reconciles those two by making sense of his past. He's gone to the pub instead. Uh, I went to primary school and I was taking away from Who said that? Yes, better things to do. You are the carer that we are talking about, really, because yeah. the elder brother's gone off to college right. and he's looking after his mum, who's also expressing psychosis as a In that first life. scene, yeah. when, when you appeared, uh, Rupert, yeah. uh, that was almost, I mean, you just stared at the TV. Yeah. That was a that depressed was a, person. Yeah, yeah, but also that was a kind of family, you know, you could see that the dad, they wanted nor a sort of sense of normality, if you like, mm. and it clearly wasn't there. Yeah. And it wasn't really a very good environment in which to grow up and be nourished. Just a bit, I, I don't know, it's such a thing. Everybody's here all of a sudden. Educated home by a series of tutors. I spend a lot of time on my own. Because your father goes out to do whatever, and always, but he's busy, busy and with since this. That time, I suppose I made leaps and bounds in my self-education. What are you doing? I'm in my room. I'm in my room doing my things. I've got things to do in my room. Keeping the sheets Oh, shut up. Oh, I feel as crusty as an adolescent boy's pyjamas. Yeah, he's gonna. He's definitely gonna die. <laughs> but whether he was pushed, whether he jumped. So there's not a happy ending. Is that what you're telling me, Dad? There's a happy mid. There's an unhappy middle. <laughs> okay. yeah, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> when did the When did the wall emerge from the process? I could say something about that, though. Yeah. I, because my role has been to drop in every now and again to rehearsals, sort of every three months or six months even, uh, and. That's the first time I came across the um, rehearsal. We were working in a railway station, and there was a, a little sort of social area with a tiny door. And um, this door was being used as a, a barrier between two spaces or a threshold. Mm. Uh, and since then, it's become a separating uh, device, if you like, an actual wall. And uh, our experience today of speaking across this space in this very fragmented way 
is very much like the experience of being on the stage and hearing voices on the other side of the wall and trying to keep pace with them. Yeah. And you see but and hear the other side. You see and hear one side and hear the other and then you see and hear the other side and hear the thing you've seen before. Right. So, so that's about So it should all sort of piece together in your head the story, but it'll be extremely confusing and rather like the experience of hearing voices. That's right. what we're hoping to come okay. to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You want to have a new life and you want to have somebody else because you want to have children and everything and this is not going to be convenient for me and for my son and that's why I'm not signing the divorce papers. You mean you're going to hang on to this stupid idea until I'm dead and you're dead? Of course, yes. What sort of life is that? It's a life that... what kind of life are you offering me? You can be free. Because yeah, the thing yeah. is, we, we know what might be good matches, but, or what might be a bad match, so, but one side might be good, one might be bad. So we've got to try right. a different match, and then a different match, and then yeah, eventually we might find bits that are just dead, both mm -hmm. sides, and yeah. we go, okay, get rid of them. So then we know that we can drop that out. But that process of different matches might take yeah. five yeah. drafts. You know, how many drafts did we do for Tough Time Lifetime? 23 or something. Because it's all about that. Uh, you know, the exact memory of those events. Mm. Uh, well, you never have a perfect memory of it. Yeah, you know, I yeah. guess, and then that changes and so on. Yeah. So. That is a bigger issue to solve than mm. which bits are good or bad. It's, it, we know that it's not complete. Yeah, we were talking about not being complete yesterday, weren't we? Yeah, about yeah. How that can, you know, it might be more like life that you suddenly, you know, you see, oh, there's, he's got a wife. All right, yeah, he'll yeah. never see her again. Yeah, yeah. God, but we've got a glimpse of his private life there. Yeah. It's never resolved it's you know, yeah. in a conventionally satisfying way, but maybe that's mm. more interesting to do. Pinteresque, uh, I'm not sure if it's meant to be comedy or not, but that kind family of... Family drama. Family <laughs> drama, thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but that kind of um, undercurrent of... Menace. Yeah, or or something yeah, yeah. that you... Something's yeah. happened here, or is about to happen, and you're not quite sure what it is, or why it's yeah. going to happen. I'm trying to understand, to talk to you. You are talking over me. What the fuck? Yeah. We could splice that in three, take part three, put it at the end, take part two and put it in the middle, or near the end, let's say. So I think it would take the edge off this climax. But okay. it's the thing of what, what do I need? The trouble is it's a, a man and woman scene. And the Patrizia's availability <laughs> is, mm. the, is the limiting factor. We've got some flexibility with me and Richard being able to double. If John shaved his head, <laughs> 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 yeah. 